Today on Twin Cam, more NEC prep, as we're going to get little Melvin's interior ready for not looking quite so horrendous. So interior cleaning may sound quite boring, and to be honest, it is. But this car's interior, because it's been used so much, um, I've done 23,000 miles in this car now, it's never had a real proper clean. It's just been hoovered and kind of wiped over a few times. So this driver's seat is a bit grim, as a few people have pointed out. And now it does actually need properly redoing. The um, stitching is coming away here, and the uh, fabric is coming away quite badly. But um, with a bit of a hoover and a wet vac, this should be a lot better. So our first step today is to actually get the seats out with this mad ratchety Torx bit I have. Each of the front seats are secured to the car by four bolts, one in each corner. And this is the only place I've come across in the Austin Rover universe that uses Torx bolts. On each rail, the frontmost bolts are complemented by these little plates that limit the forward travel of the seat to stop it falling off the rails. I'm going to drop these bolts back through the rails just to keep these plates in place and to allow me to move the seats forward safely when I need to undo the two bolts at the back. The front bolts all go through this plastic panel covering the cross member, while the rear bolts go into turrets mounted to either the sills or the exhaust tunnel and they're braced together by a metal bar below the rails. With all the bolts removed, the passenger seat can be liberated from the car. The driver's seat comes out in much the same fashion. Although I've owned this car for nearly five years, I've somehow never taken the seats out of the car, so this is a first making a metro even more spacious than it already is. To remove the rear bench, we first have to get rid of the parcel shelf, then unhook the backrest from its supports and jackknife it over, exposing the bolts. Because Melvin is a base model, he has a single piece rear bench, as opposed to the 60-40 split of upspec metros. What this means for us is that the whole bench is secured to the body with only two bolts. These go through the brackets that support the seat and house the hinges to allow it to jackknife over. These two bolts go straight through the floor of the car, and as a result, the bottom of them is exposed to the world, hence the mankiness of this one. With these removed, the rear bench can be awkwardly manoeuvred out through the driver's door. With all the seats in the house, we can assess the damage. They're pretty grim, and we're starting to bring the car down somewhat, not that it sits on a particularly high level anyway. But before we can break out the cleaning solutions and wet vacs, a good dry vac is in order. This wet vac I'm using is a little broken, the trigger to be precise, so I have to wet the entire surface before turning the machine off, disconnecting the solution, and then turning it back on to suck out 30 years of human slime. And as you can tell, there's quite a lot of that. This is what came out of the driver's seat with just one pass. I went over all the seats a number of times until I was at least relatively happy, and the results are pretty impressive. In this image, the seat on the left has had two passes, while the seat on the right hadn't been touched. The vibrancy in the Harlequin pattern is astonishing when it's as clean as it should be. So now the seats are cleaned and they're drying off, we can spend a little bit of time on getting the rest of the interior actually half decent because while the seats are out, there's no reason not to. 
So to make our lives easier, we're obviously going to take out things like the floor mats and also things like this big bar that the back of the seats sit on. Although it's only been a few weeks since I put up the Bits and Bobs video where I added these genuine Rover rubber floor mats, they've actually been in the car for much longer and as a result they've also gained their fair share of grime. Now we're at this point, it might make sense to actually take the carpets out of the car, but I'm not going to, uh, for a few reasons. First of all is time. I just need to get the car ready. Um, second of all, actually, three reasons. Second of all is that you can't see what's under the carpet, so as long as the carpets are clean enough, then that's fine. Third of all, the carpets are a little bit awkward to take out because you've got to undo these plastic trims along the um, along the side of the doors and they're held in with a million self-tapping screws so frankly I can't be bothered. So we're going to leave the interior in and just clean it as best we can, leave the carpet in should I say, and clean it as best we can. More SIBO action. As I've never had the seats out of the car, this is the first chance I've had to clean around where they mount. And thanks to the shape of the exhaust tunnel, seat belt mounts and where the seat rails sit, the area around the handbrake can be difficult to keep properly clean. I've also decided not to wet back the carpet as it's not noticeably dirty and isn't all that visible with everything in place. Now that we've vacuumed out the interior pretty thoroughly, I have a big box of microfiber cloths and I'm just going to wipe over everything. I've also got a bottle of, it's just out there so I can't quite reach it, Autoglim interior cleaner and I've got a bucket of water. So we're going to get to cleaning. First to be tackled is that area I just mentioned. The little plate that the buckles mount to really does attract dirt and vacuuming just isn't enough. You need to get in there with a cloth. More base model magnificence with the handbrake. There's neither a gaiter nor a grip on the 1.1C, though they do tease you with the notches in the lever where the grip locates upon. What all K-Series metros do get is the same gear lever, save for the knob identifying four or five speeds. The gator is another place that attracts dust and dirt and is difficult to get completely clean. Nice knob, mind you. Though the four and five speed metros are only marginally different in terms of cruising revs, there was also a close ratio five speed available on the GTA and GTI. And as willing and responsive as Melvin feels, I can't imagine how close those gears must seem on the hotter metros. A place a lot of people often overlook are the seat belts. And as they're always crossed over your chest, you wouldn't be surprised at the amount of gunk that can build up on them. And to make sure it looks as good as possible, I'm taking off the top bolt cover to clean around the edges. Because of their brightness next to the granite coloured trim, the bare metal door tops stand out. Metros have rather high sills for side protection reasons, but that means that a lot of people bash their shoes along these plastic trims as they get in, so with only a few weeks use they can get muddy in winter. Can't forget the plastic trim around the cross member, especially where the seat rail bolts in. Welcome to day two of messing around with Melvin's interior and as you'll have noticed I've put the two front seats in and the reason for that is that I had to get the car in the garage last night so I put the driver's seat in and unfortunately I also had to give someone an emergency lift so the passenger seat's gone in. I have re-hoovered the carpets because crap got everywhere because passengers um, but yeah I ran out of light yesterday so let's carry on what we're doing and the first things first let's get the rear bench in. It's much easier to get the rear bench in and out with no front seats, but I'll just have to manoeuvre around them. Yeah. 
Thanks to the fact that the brackets feature the hinges, as I mentioned before, you have to get the angle perfect on both sides before you can start threading the bolts. And with everything in place and tightened, the seat can be folded up and the backrest secured in its two mounts either side of the parcel shelf. but I need to fold it back forwards again as I'd forgotten to thread the seatbelt buckles through the seat back. With the freshly vacuumed parcel shelf reinstalled, we're done with the seats and carpets. Now it's just a case of cleaning the dashboard and switch gear. There are three areas in a Metro's interior that feel cheap. The two door bins and the steering column cowling. Fortunately, you don't touch the cowling that much, but it doesn't do much for what is otherwise a very well-designed, attractive, solid feeling and well-assembled dashboard. The instruments and switch gear are particularly good. In fact, the quality of these is second to none in the volume market in period. However, another dust trap is the cutout for the heater controls. With the dash mat, which wouldn't have originally been fitted to a 1.1C, cleaned and replaced, there's just one more thing to address. I love these floor mats. And after cleaning to keep them as black as possible, Autoglim's vinyl and rubber care is fantastic stuff. It may have the ability to make them ever so slightly slippery, but nowhere near enough to make a difference. And it's more than worth it when you peer through the windows and clock them at a show. With that, all four mats can be put back in the car, and it all looks very nearly as good as it would have done in 1991, and that's more than good enough for the NEC. So that's most of the interior done, and frankly, it looks brilliant. It's the best this car interior has ever looked um, in terms of cleanliness. Of course, while I've had the car, that driver's seat has deteriorated. It's just the fabric's pulled away from the foam slightly, and the, um, this bolster here has started to go. But I mentioned all that before, and um, it's one of those things just with age and mileage. But generally, it looks fantastic, but there's one issue that we haven't addressed in this video, and that's the door cards and the door furniture. And the reason for that is very simple, because it's absolutely shagged. These door cards have big chunks taken out, and you can't see them generally from, you know, kind of a general view of the door. Uh, but if you look closely, you can see there are bits of the vinyl that's come off. And these um, door bins aren't really connected to the doors at all. So, that's an issue that we're going to address in the next video where we're going to put all new door cards and all new door bins on and then eventually it should make this interior a little bit nicer to be in as well because if there's one thing that really annoys me about this car it's the incessant trim rattling it's ridiculous and i've cured a few of them while i've had the car but one of the things that really really annoys me is that when you're driving it's just not nice on smooth roads it's absolutely fine but over bumpy roads, which is virtually every road in Britain, it's just not a nice car to be in, and I cringe slightly for my passengers. But that that should cure one of those big issues of that car, because both of these door bins just rattle like hell, and it should make it a much nicer place to be, and it means that people can actually put things in this door bin, because at the moment, it's not really very structurally intact. 
So until then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to TwinCam as well. I'm forever indebted to my wonderful Patreon supporters who do also get little bits of exclusive content out every now and then. So if you'd like to see that or support me that way, then please do follow the link in the description. And I'll have more videos coming along soon. This is genuinely the best this interior has ever looked. It's fabulous.